So we came all the way from um, Dubai, and today we want to speak about the magic of augmented reality. So how do we create new and innovative technologies? Well, they're built on, on four principles, mainly if you want the, the four primary colors of, of what we do. Uh, first off is augmented reality. Then we have uh, projection technologies and uh, gesture-based technologies. Here we chose Yoda as our icon because this literally allows you to move objects simply by waving your hand. It's like having superpowers. And uh, we combine that with mobile and web services as well. Uh, what is exactly augmented reality and how do we make the magic? Uh, it enhances our physical world and gives us adds another layer, another dimension to the physical world. Augmented reality is actually overlaying 2D or 3D content onto the physical world by the use of any camera-enabled device. And so there's a whole creative process that goes into it. It's really fusing art with technology to create something amazing, something magical. So to go into more detail, in regards to the creative process that goes into it, I'll hand over to Dennis, who will explain. Thank you, Danny. Uh, before we start, I would uh, ask the questions. Uh, can we expect to create works with emotional resonance just using a procedural logic and mathematics? So an example code is very structured and strict and defined by the way of using it. Art is free and not close defined. So how do we merge those two opposite components together? This is the challenge we're actually facing every time. So new available tools, languages are different through the additional one. They're not only serving uh, one purpose anymore, calculating numbers, putting in database. We have now dedicated tools to create art. We have designed optimized programming languages. A programming language is uh, like any other language. It can be spoken in different ways, different accents. So actually code can be poetry. We have different tools which create different outcomes. So it's not a tool only, it's the way of using it. An art form is defined by tools, but the tools give an art form its grammar. The way how we handle a new project, Pixelbug, is the first thing what you're going to do is see who is the audience. So which sense, which emotion you want to stimulate? What is the best way to showcase it? The platform, the mobile device? What kind of output we're looking for? Is it 2D, 3D, it's analog, it's digital? What is the best? output for this purpose. What do we want to show? What do we want to say? For example, if you develop an application for kids, it's uh, rather better to take videos and images than plain text. So we have plenty of software development kits, frameworks, development languages for this process. Assets, tools, knowledge, and experience defining the way, and the mood and the situation. If I would do the same project next year, what we did recent, it might be completely different. So our freedom and creativity is how to use it. The biggest challenge actually facing is don't scare people. The app must be easy to use, useful, easy to understand, and maybe it's surprising. So finding and using the most effective tools is the most important part. Each way is different, and there's no predefined way. So every time, it's a new challenge. We do this because we believe that the creative adult is a child who survived. And this is true because, you know, sometimes while we're in our daily routines, we tend to get caught up and forget and repress this inner child. And this is the source of all our creative creativity. So on that topic, the next demo that we'd like to demonstrate has to do with a children's game. It was developed for Nestle's Nesquik brand. And we were tasked with the large responsibility of reviving the Nesquik mascot, the Nesquik bunny, also known as Quickie. So I know it's, uh, we have a lot of fun with that too, but his name is really Quickie. And so <laughs> we were tasked with uh, you know, bringing him back 
and to relevancy for today's digital age. Hey there, friend. I'm Quickie, and it's so great to meet you. <laughs> Congratulations on downloading Quickie's World. I can't wait to show you what's inside and take you through my world of awesomeness. Just to leave you with a few parting thoughts in regards to where technology and augmented reality is going, this is just the beginning. It's just, we're just warming up in regards to what we're able to do with this type of technology. And we believe that augmented reality will become an integral part of our everyday lives, especially with the advent of wearable technologies like Google Glass or smart watches, um, smart devices, just like the Nike Fuel Band I have on here. And it's, um, it's going to raise a whole new set of debates in regards to privacy issues and data overload. And this is uh, even more obvious when we consider um, the latest acquisition by Facebook of Oculus for over $2 billion. Now, I can only leave you to think what they're going to do with this. Or Google's very strong venture into robotics, you know, some even assimilating Google to a Skynet. And it can be intimidating, it can be sort of a scary vision of the future, but it doesn't necessarily have to, to be that way. In fact, if we embrace automation, it frees up our time to harness our creative powers. It really frees up our time to build and design new things. It frees up our time to think and imagine a world that is not bound by the laws of physics. It frees up our time to let our imaginations run wild and free, just like Quickie. Thank you.